Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a digital rebar tour. Today we're going to talk about DCOS, the uh, Mesos uh, platform by Mesosphere. This is uh, the work that we did collaboratively with Mesosphere, boy, almost a half year ago, um, where we worked on a bare metal deployment for DCOS. Uh, in the last week, we went ahead and put a wizard on top of it to make it more accessible. Uh, and so I wanted to do a video showing you how to use it. Um, there's a really old video showing some scripts and things like that. This uh, replaces that and makes it pretty accessible if you want to try it yourself using uh, physical or KVM slave type deployments. It does not yet work in cloud because it assumes that you have multiple drives. So uh, all fudgeable and if that's something important to you about using this technique to do cloud deployments or packet uh, type deployments we are very happy to work with you on that. It's pretty small um, changes on it about how the deployment sets up Docker is really the whole, the whole rationale but in this case we're going to do what we do with um, Rebar all the time. If you haven't seen this process we have several videos on getting you to this stage in this case, I already have a DCOS deployment. I'll jump to that in a minute. I have a pool of nodes that are available, and I have um, one node that's been discovered. So my system's in a, in a good state to sort of run a couple of demos. I'm going to go to the DCOS wizard. I'm going to create my second deployment, DCOS2. And what I'm going to do here is uh, use existing nodes. We're going to put CentOS on them. In this case, the pool nodes already have CentOS installed. So if I use pool, I can just skip right through this step. Um, I've got a couple of parameters. There are actually a lot more settings, but they're just not exposed in the wizard. I'm going to have one control and one worker for this demo. Uh, wizard pool, because we're going to jump to the, the larger DCOS install in a second. Um, we're just using the API. So remember, everything I'm showing you is really just API backed. You can do everything that I'm showing you from the CLI or the API so that you, you, you don't have to have this GUI experience. You can hook this into an automation system or run it um, by, from the command line just as well. Uh, it's just not as uh, easy to understand what's going on as, as far as the UIs go. So when I run this command here, um, I could have finished it in the wizard also, but I'm going to get back the deployments created over here, deployments. I now have uh, two parallel DCOS deployments started, um, the pulled nodes from the pool. So here DCOS is going to spin up uh, those nodes. Because I've already deployed the operating systems, uh, it's going to skip that step. So it's a little bit faster uh, to take this type of action. And it's just going to start with NTP client and working through the process. What you'll see here is uh, all this is, is open source. Uh, out of the digital rebar, digital rebar workloads. So there's a DCOS area here. Uh, rebar YAML describes all the roles that you're seeing, the wizard um, pieces and parts like that. It's pretty straightforward. And if I drop, jump in to what's actually going on, it's really very straightforward. It's bash, a bash execution of the DCOS install. Very important to us that we are not trying to create a proprietary DCOS installer or even a forked one. This is using DCOS's own install mechanisms, just like our Kubernetes pieces use the upstream Ansible playbooks for Kubernetes. So the goal here is to keep people using these tools in the communities for the tools. And then since we can do parallel deployments, you can then start adding or mix and matching. I could do a Kubernetes deployment side by side with DCOS or tune my DCOS depending on what software-defined networking I wanted to have. Um, the place where we're actually running into the uh, multi-disk requirement is in the pre-config, uh, the prereqs where we set up Docker. And so if you look at if you look into this, this is where we actually have a multi-disk Docker expectation. And that's required by DCOS, so it checks that a volume group is created, therefore we create a volume group. Once again, just plain ops, not trying to do anything crazy special. Um, and the system, if you see right now, is going through and building the different pieces. One thing I wanted to call attention to is this DCS control. Um, this is part of the way uh, Digital Rebar works, and it actually create metadata based on the cluster itself. So here we've built the control addresses for the cluster. If I add new nodes, we will expand the control addresses and then pass those downstream. So as you add or change control nodes, we're going to dynamically regenerate the cluster information that the 
um, workers in this cluster need. Um, both names and comments. This is a standard thing that Digital Rebar does and you can use it in any application deployment that you want to do. Um, we needed it for DCOS because of the bash approach we're taking instead of Ansible. Uh, the Kubernetes Ansible stuff, we build an inventory file behind the scenes using the same technique. Um, so from this perspective we've got a deployment that's going. The DCOS master is going to take some time, about 20 minutes, to download all the containers and get things spun up. So instead of having you wait through that I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, this working cluster we already have. If I go to that first head node, that, that master, I can come in, uh, go to its address, and you'll see I'm just going into my login. I can sign in to DCOS. This is a completely fresh cluster. I've never logged in before. Um, I have to say, this is super easy. Um, so from this perspective, I now have a system. I have the two nodes that, that were identified in it. Um, and if I wanted to add a workload into it, I can go into the packages universe and uh, I can just pick something. Uh, in this case, if I wanted Spark, I can install Spark. And uh, DCOS is going to go through the process of downloading, installing, and getting Spark running. I could do the same thing off this long list of, of prepackaged um, applications. It's, it's really neat like that. Um, and so if I wanted, um, say, Minio, uh, I didn't do any configuration. I'm not going to try in this in this video. But basically, um, you get you get the idea of of how easy it is to go in and start things going. And you can see when as soon as I started that application, it started generating load, and I got notice notified of it. Um, and there's work going on here, and the system is already set up to automatically redistribute load. So if one of these nodes gets busy, it's going to spin up um, new capabilities right there on the fly for me. Um, so super powerful. And then if I wanted to take that action and extend this cluster, so if I have my, my DCOS cluster over here, I have an extra system available. So I could take that system, I could put it in this DCOS cluster. And then in that cluster, uh, I have a new node but no actions. I can propose it. I can then bind uh, DCOS slave into that role. And what you'll see happen is we're going to automatically uh, add that, and then the system's going to identify additional roles that are missing for it to go. In this case, this node hasn't been provisioned, so the system automatically figures out that it has to install an operating system and provision it. So you see all those actions. It's not doing anything yet. I have to commit that work, so this is a proposal. Once I commit it, behind the scenes, Digital Rebar is going to actually go take that machine, uh, provision it. So in a physical system, if you had RAID and BIOS configuration set up, it would set the RAID and BIOS configurations, uh, out of band management, naming, everything that you need, and then it would automatically pull it through the DCOS infrastructure, add it to DCOS, rerun the roles, and you would then see a new node show up in that DCOS deployment. Um, really, really powerful stuff. Same would go for node removals, um, where the events are going to trigger um, rerunning roles and things like that. Uh, it, really, it really requires uh, indemnipotency on the scripts that are used to do this configuration. So um, this is my node being set up behind the scenes as we get this deployment. So wow, a whole bunch of material um, for you in this demo. Multiple DCOS deployments in parallel, adding nodes to them, um, showing you how DCOS actually works, and then adding a workload. Um, all in a, about a 10 minute demo. So I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, please contact us. We're, uh, I'm Rob Hirschfeld with RackN. The project is Digital Rebar. Uh, and this was the DCOS demo. Thank you.